the misery of Indian rural women. When they menstruate, they have to leave the countryside to live in a simple house with other menstruating women for 10 days. The reason is that men think menstruating women are so dirty that they don't want to touch them. But Jack is the complete opposite of a man. He loves his wife so much that she cries when he chops onions for dinner. So he built an automatic united couple. His wife's hands hurt from washing clothes and she always does the dishes. But one day, his wife suddenly ran away from the balcony. Panicked, Jack tried to approach her and ask her questions. She said nothing and felt ashamed to say it in public. Jack realized that his wife was on her period. He tried to persuade her to go back inside and stay there, but his wife insisted on staying on the balcony for five days. She insisted on staying on the balcony for five days. He was afraid of dirtying Jack. Jack failed to persuade his wife. He had to sneak out onto the balcony at night to take care of her. The next day, Jack found his wife drying the sand. He immediately realized that it was the sanitary napkin she used regularly when she had her period. He didn't understand why his wife used it as tampons when he didn't even use it to wipe down his bike. But his wife used it as tampons. Jack, who was very worried about his wife, he rushed to buy towels. People who didn't know thought he was having a secret meeting with his boss. But when his wife saw how expensive it was, it cost $55. I am already poor. Why not use the money to buy food? Take them back and give them back to me. Jack thought for a moment that 55 Indian rupees for his towels was too much. He unwraps the towel and studies the material. It's just a few pieces of cotton and a piece of fabric. I could make them myself. Jack is ready to make his own pads. Jack rushes to buy cotton and fabric. He designed the first generation of in-house pads. He brought them back to his wife, but his wife reused the dirty cloth. The reason is that the first generation who made it didn't work and it soiled their clothes. Jack was not satisfied. He made a second generation of towels and gave them to his own sister. Suddenly, his sister felt humiliated. She burst into tears on the spot. Jack still wasn't satisfied. As he pondered improvements. He said himself as a designer, as a designer. Said the villager. Every object you design, you should try it for yourself. Jack immediately had a bold idea. A man takes a pair of women's underwear and puts a homemade sanitary napkin on them. Then he puts red dye in it. Finally, he puts them on himself. He does squats and starts jumping up and down. Guess what he does? He was going to make sanitary napkins for his wife that she could use so that she no longer had to use dirty laundry. At first he was happy that the pigment did not flow. But a few seconds later, as he was walking down the street, he looked at his pants and saw that they were red. Jack drops his bike and jumps into the river. The red pigment even colors the water red. Not only did Jack shame his wife in public, but the villagers also accused him of being a businessman. Even the villagers accused him of being a pervert. What man would be sick enough to invent sanitary napkins? And the humiliated woman thinks for a woman. Shame is the greatest disease compared to menstruation. Eventually, the woman is taken back to her mother's house. But Jack was determined to go to town to work on a sanitary napkin that could be used. He contacted the people of the institute to find out what the towels sold on the market are made of. He learns that they are not made of cotton but of cellulose fibers. But researchers don't know where to get them. If he knew, he would be a university professor. The next moment, Jack knew. The next moment he was babysitting for a college professor. He thought he could learn something on the sly, but he was so busy that Jack didn't see the professor for days. Luckily, with the help of his son's online research, he discovered that cellulose fibers were very strong. He discovered that the cellulose fibers were sold by an American company. Jack came up with the idea of posing as a big client. He received a box of cellulose fiber samples. But instead, a piece of cardboard arrived. While Jack suspected that he was being tricked. The golden-haired man next to him, the golden-haired man next to him discovered the secret. The cardboard turned out to be compressed cellulose fiber. The professor who has returned home notices this, knowing what Jack was up to. He decided to help her. He told him that with this machine he could make 100 wafers per minute. But knowing that the machine would cost millions of dollars, Jack was very frustrated. Jack was very frustrated and about to give up. He discovered that the process of making the machine was very simple. 
There were only four steps mixing, compression, packaging and sterilization. So he decides to build a machine to make sanitary napkins. Jack asked a friend to borrow 90,000 Indian rupees to buy the materials. He uses a steel drum to make a mixer. He used some pieces of iron to make a compressor. When the compresses are ready, he wraps them by hand. Finally, he disinfects them in a sterilizer. The first batch of compresses is successfully produced. A man wants to find a woman on her period to try these homemade sanitary napkins. But when he no longer knows where to turn, two women were in the street. They stuttered and asked her where they could sell sanitary napkins. Jack exits. It's homemade towels and say I got them. The women were amazed. It was the first time I had seen an Indian with sanitary napkins. The next day, Jack reunites with Anna, the woman who got her period last night. He asks her what she thinks about using the sanitary napkin. Anna replied that it was just like commercial sanitary napkins. Jack is very happy to have studied the matter for so long. It was what he expected. And Anna, who was a student at the health center. Listening to Jack after finding out about every day and night's research, she went to visit his tampon factory and said she would help him in any way she could. As Jack called a friend to pay off his debt, a man told him there would be an international design competition. Anna announced the organization of an international design competition. The first place winner would receive 200,000 Indian rupees. When Jack found out, he borrowed an extra 500 Indian rupees from a friend to pay for his travel expenses. He entered the competition with the machine he had invented. The only thing he could say in his broken English was that he had invented tampons for only 2 Indian rupees. And thanks to his hard work day and night, he ended up winning the 200,000 euro prize. After the competition, Anna told him that several companies were approaching him to obtain his patent and that he would win thousands of dollars. But Jack didn't want to do that. If the machine became famous, the machine would become more expensive and the pads would be more expensive. He returned to his village. He was determined to help the thousands of women who still did not have access to sanitary napkins. Anna is impressed by his sincerity and decides to help him sell the towels. And because women know women better, not only did more women come to buy Jack's towels at the same time many more women who were unemployed. They went to work in Jack's factory. In this way, women's health has been protected and gives them the opportunity to work. Jack's success is such that he is invited to speak at the United Nations internationally. Despite his poor English, he made a statement that moved everyone in the audience. Men, great or powerful, do not make nations strong. A wife is strong, a mother is strong, a sister is strong. It is the nation that is strong. Today in India, only 18% of women have access to sanitary napkins. But Jack vowed that all women would have access to sanitary pads and hunger. Jack was recognized by the whole village. He proved himself by his actions and he got back together with his wife and he lives happily ever after. Such a great man. Sanitary napkins, isn't it one of the world's superheroes?